All right, runners, this way. All right, thank you all for coming. We really appreciate you joining us and uh, being flexible with all the changes this year. We're really excited to uh, have everybody back. So this is our oh, <laughs> I'm gonna be on the right side of the starting line. Cascade Crest is an amazing mountain 100 miler. It starts in Easton, Washington and ends there a normal year, <laughs> but it goes all through the Cascades on the PCT, through the Snoqualmie Tunnel. It has 23,000 feet of elevation gain. It is just an epic adventure. <laughs> Switcheroo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys get some rest. Runners on your mark. Get set. Go. My name is Angela Kruger. I am a mom. I live in Redmond, Washington, and I am 45 years old. <laughs> and see. <scene. laughs> I started running about 25 years ago because of my husband, Matt, who <laughs> challenged me to run a mile so that he would buy me these tennis shoes that I wanted. <laughs> Just because I wanted the shoes so much, <laughs> I ran the mile and I thought I was gonna die. I cried at the end and I got my shoes. Doing it! <laughs> and little did he know how many shoes he was gonna have to buy me <laughs> over the next 25 years. <laughs> Over time, the more consistent I was, the more I felt better. So it just made me want to keep doing it more. I did my first half marathon in 1998. Somehow, by the end of it, I couldn't wait to do more of it. So <laughs> signed up for my first marathon in 2002. And then I didn't do another one for 10 years. That was after having a baby um, in 2007. My son Sam, who is now almost 14. Oh, oh my god! Oh, one thing at a time. Thank you. <laughs> almost halfway. It was kind of that year that I realized that there were trail races <laughs> that other people were doing, and I couldn't believe it had taken me so long to find this and figure oh, this out. I'm feeling a little tired, but like, and you know what? I might actually want my phone. Okay, I'll go grab those. For yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll stop again. Oh, okay. Woo! Yeah. I think I'm gonna do a little, <laughs> little stretch here too before I get going. Cause oh, my back is like real stretch. Feeling it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I ran my first 50K in March of 2015. It was the Chuckanut 50K and I loved it. It felt like a transcendent experience to me. And then fast forward to November when I got um, diagnosed with breast cancer at 39 years old. Um, I feel like I knew in my heart the minute I found it that it was not good, even though they kept saying, oh, it's fine, you know, you're too young. And my kid was only eight years old. And I was just like, whoa, what the hell? You know, I'm at my, my most fit. How is this possible that my body, like it felt like my body was betraying me, even though I was doing everything for it that you are supposed to do. It was devastating. Got the diagnosis and I was actually signed up to run the Seattle Marathon. I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it. I was a complete mess. But when I got there, I had this thought of, what if this is my last chance? And so I just decided to do it. I ran it <laughs> then the very next day and I'm really glad I did. It gave me back some of the confidence in myself that I felt like had been ripped away just hearing, you know, 
the words, you have cancer, so. <sighs> oh. Yes, all right, there you are. Oh, yeah. Woo! Okay. Woo. I literally just thought something was touching my head, abandoned with my poles. I'm like, ah, what was that? Oh, hello. Yay. It's my people. Can you believe it? You are very sweaty. I am very sweaty. There's also a semi warm cheese pizza. Sweet. Oh my gosh. So excited. And there's a bunch of grapes in my pocket that I forgot were there too. <laughs> Within three weeks, I was on chemo, like going in every three weeks. I had had my port placed. They wanted to do chemo right away because the tumor was pretty large. I had to see a medical oncologist, a radiation oncologist. They wanted me to have a full mastectomy. I was in the prep area, you know, trying to change my clothes and stuff, and I had the freak out of my life. The surgeon came in and was very kind to me and just said, we're not doing this today. I was relieved, but also still really confused about what I should do because I wanted to do everything I could do to keep living <laughs> and being here for my kid and my husband and, you know, exploring the world and doing all the things that I still have to do in my life. I finally got a referral to an oncoplastic surgeon. So I went in the next month in September. I had the surgery. I didn't freak out. <laughs> I remember waking up to a beautiful sunny day and like and thinking this is the the new start of my life. I had my very last radiation treatment on New Year's Eve 2016. That was a celebration <laughs> because I was done. I was done with all of it. It was a very long 14 months. <laughs> That's been so different. The weather's been perfect. And then I've been like able to eat. I haven't felt sick. So knock on the next tree I see. I'll see you later. Running through chemo and radiation and surgery, all the cancer treatments that I had and immunotherapy, it was hard. Every time I came in, you know, and said like, oh yeah, I ran a half marathon yesterday. <laughs> My doctors were like, you what? <laughs> the hardest part was after surgery. When you have breast cancer surgery, you know, it's a little bad idea to be bouncing around too much <laughs> immediately afterwards. So I made it 22 days before I finally begged the doctor to let me go run with double mega bra. <laughs> I just inherently needed it. I needed to be in the woods and out on the trails and feeling like normal, like a normal person. <laughs> just for some amount of time during the day, even when nothing was normal in my life. So like weirdly, it was during chemo and all the cancer treatment that was when I got really, really consistent and it just became like part of me. And now, I, now it's just ingrained in me so much that I can't not do it. <laughs> it. It's just, that's just, it's just something I do every day, just like brushing my teeth, so. I would like a pizza. <laughs> I spent 2017 basically just trying to get back to feeling normal in my body. I just ran a lot and I started running with friends more, a lot more than I had before. I had always kind of been a solo runner. Those bloods are amazing. Oh my God. Oh, hey. I had this in the back of my mind the whole time since I had done my first 50K. Right before all of this happened, I wanted to do another one. <laughs> I wanted to see like what was next after that too. Yeah, that's awesome. 
real food has been like I've been needing it and a payday bar. <laughs> I really started looking at my own mortality as a 39 year old person. What overtook those thoughts was what if this is my last chance? What if what if this is the last time I get to try and do a marathon or any, you know, anything like that? I didn't want to take anything for granted in my life anymore. And I wanted to do all the things that I had always planned to do. My philosophy just became, don't wait. Don't wait to do the things that you want to do. Don't wait to tell people you love them. Don't wait to challenge yourself. Do hard things because you can and not because you are forced into them. Okay. Thank you, love. All right. I am one five zero. One five zero. zero. One Thank zero. you so much. Thank you, all the volunteers. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you for the last four. Okay. I got to Cascade Crest because I wanted the big challenge. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait to do it. So even though I was pretty freaked out, I was determined that I was gonna run my first 100 miler. I put my name in for the lottery and on the rainy day as I was pulling up to Tiger Mountain to run, I got the message saying, congrats, you got into Cascade Crest. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> I can start to think about the future again because that had been kind of hard, you know, after after all the cancer stuff, like it's hard to think about anywhere far in the future. Once again, I didn't want to wait to do these things and to try to see what I could do. And I didn't want to let cancer shit stop me from, from doing any of this stuff. I had so many amazing people show up for me in those last four miles. I had no idea how I was gonna make it to the end though. I had 43 minutes to make it those last four miles and there was, there was no way. In my mind, there was no way I was gonna be able to do that. Even though I like to think of myself as such a big badass, I just didn't think it was possible. It all just internalized and suddenly I started believing. I started believing their words that I could do it as long as I just kept focusing. Even that was a huge lesson for me. Even having gone through all of the things that I've been through in my life, 
I found some strength there that even cancer didn't like make me know I had. I just realized that I can do so much more than I think I can do. I just have to believe it. I think it is important to get things that tend to have a stigma out in the open because it may help someone else who's going through it. When we don't have anyone to share our burdens with, it becomes much more of a burden than it actually is or needs to be. We all need to know it's okay to talk about these things. My name is Angela Kuzier. I am a mama to a wonderful kid. I am a cancer survivor. I'm a 100 mile ultra finisher and I'm a badass. You are too. Don't let anything stop you. You are always stronger than you think.